Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're gonna to be teaching you how to brine your own whole ham so you can smoke it just in the backyard and make an incredible meal for the whole family. This is perfect for the holidays like Christmas. And this one we're doing in advance of the holiday season just so that you've got a little bit of time to digest it and then do the brine yourself so you can smoke it for your family. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick around. So we're gonna walk you through the first step here, which is really just picking out the right cut of pork for this particular recipe. So you're gonna to wanna to call up your butcher and ask for a fresh whole leg of pork, which is a ham. And you're not gonna want that to have been pre-brined or anything. You're just gonna want it freshly butchered. So once you've been able to lock down that supply, you can start prepping for your brine. The brine's really simple. It's just water and salt. Now to start your brine and to get the right ratio of water to salt, We've got a bit of an old school trick method for that, that you don't need to measure anything out. The first step is just heating up some water, bringing it to a boil on the stove top, and then start to pour in salt. Now, when your water's boiling, you wanna add in a peeled potato. And once it starts to become buoyant and float on the surface, you know you've added in enough salt. So with the potato in the boiling water, you're adding in salt and just keep going, keep going until that potato actually floats to the surface. Then you know you've got your brine at the right density or mixture of water to salt. Now you're gonna need a really big bucket like this. We've got a custom brining bucket, but you can go to Home Depot or any of the other large retailers and you can just get a regular bucket and then use a food grade plastic bag just to line the interior of the bucket. So once you've got your brine, you need to let it cool down you put your ham into the bucket and then you just pour the cool brine over top of that. It's really important that you let your brine cool back down to room temperature before you add it on top of your ham. You don't want any cooking to take place in your brining bucket. You just want the curing process to be taking place in there. You don't want any cooking. So again, really important. Let your brine cool back down to room temperature before you pour it in. The next important step is just making sure that you've got your brine all the way up and over the top of your ham. You don't want any part of the pork leg being exposed here. You want that fully covered with brine. And once you've done that, just seal it off, put it in the fridge, and then let it be for two weeks. So that brings you back to the step that we're at here today. So we've had this brining for a couple weeks in the fridge and we're now ready to smoke it today. So this is what we've been building up all the excitement in the house for, so let's get started. So we're gonna need to empty out the bucket of all the brine water, but I just wanna show this to you. This is just beautiful. So we're gonna go dump this in the forest and we'll be right back just with our pure ham and we'll show you how to prep it. We're just over at the woods at the side of the house here. Just gonna dump that out. Obviously, make sure you keep your hand in the bucket. Just want to get rid of the liquid. Perfect. Okay, so now we're just going to remove the ham from the bucket here. Oh, this is a big boy and it's been sitting in here for weeks, so it'll take a little bit of effort. All right. Just look at that guy. You can still smell this is really nice and fresh. The brine process worked really perfectly here. You should smell your ham, make sure it smells nice and fresh. If it doesn't, I wouldn't proceed from here. But now we're just gonna towel it down. Get this nice and dry, get all the excess brine off of here. And you'll see this ham, this has the skin on it. We wanna keep the skin on it. If you want, you can remove it. I prefer to just keep it on, really for the appearance, frankly, and I'll show you that here at the end. We won't be eating the skin in the end on this one, but it just makes for a beautiful looking ham. Now, one other thing I should have mentioned here, when you're talking to your butcher, make sure you ask them to remove the H bone, and that's really just a large bone that goes in here. You just wanna be left with the socket of the leg here and the leg bone that goes all the way up, but you want the rest of this just to be pure meat. 
So as I edited this video, I was remembering back to the evening when we were eating that ham and it was wonderful, but it was a little bit on the salty side. So now what I'd recommend as a step here before you actually score your ham, just make sure you fill up a bucket, use the brining bucket that you started with, just put it in cold water in there, put the ham back in there, leave it for an hour to 24 hours, and then you should be all set and ready to go. So we're flipping this over. And now the only thing we have to do to prep this is score it. So we're gonna score through the fat cap, through the skin. We're not trying to slice into the meat, but this will give it a beautiful diamond square hatching as we smoke this. Now that we've scored it in that direction, we're just gonna turn it and score it in the opposite direction to create a really nice diamond pattern here. Beautiful. So that's all we have to do to prepare this. We've got this beautiful cross hatch you can see embedded all throughout the pork. That's gonna create this really nice, as I mentioned, diamond texture. And it's also gonna allow us when we make our baste, a little place for that baste to really fully absorb into the roast. So let's take this over to the smoker. We're just gonna turn that to 225. And this pellet smoker, we're running a maple bourbon bag of pellets here on the side. So that's gonna add to a really nice smoke profile to go along with our maple syrup brown sugar base that we've got coming on. All right, so we're just gonna close the lid down, let that warm up for five minutes, and then we'll get the ham on. All right, now the smoker's up to temp, we're gonna get the ham on. So we'll just place that right in the middle of the smoker and we'll get our temp probe and we're gonna put our temp probe into the thickest part of the ham, just like that. Now we're aiming for an internal temp of about 145 to 150. So this is gonna take a while given the size of that beast we got on there. So we're gonna let this go for about probably 90 minutes to two hours before we start basting it. We want all of these triangles to open up so that when we start basting, that baste will actually work its way into the entire ham. All right, so we'll check back in in 90 minutes. Now we're just gonna check the pellet hopper. And we've got a 30 pound pellet hopper here, but we still have room for some more. So we're just gonna add in some more of these maple bourbon pellets. Beautiful. Like I said, this is gonna be a long cook. So you wanna make sure your pellet hopper's full. The last thing you wanna do is run out of fuel halfway through and that to stall your hand. So now it's time to make our baste. Our baste is gonna comprise of brown sugar. So we're gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of brown sugar, and this is just gonna be rough. We're going in with three tablespoons. Then we're gonna add in some maple syrup. Add in some maple syrup. Now that brown sugar and maple syrup are gonna caramelize over the course of this cook, and it's gonna bring a really nice rich color to our ham. The other thing to add some color to the ham here is a little bit of soy sauce. Now we don't need any more salt in the ham, so we're not adding it for that, but we're just adding it for the dark, rich color. So we've gone in with a little, probably a tablespoon and a half there worth of maple syrup. And now we're going in with apple cider vinegar, and this is just to get it all to dissolve. Add as much as you need in order for this to actually all dissolve together. Go with a little bit more and apple cider vinegar, you'll know this is what we usually baste our briskets with, diluted apple cider vinegar. So it, that brings a really nice tanginess and cut through some of the fat of the ham. All right, now let's check in on the ham. Beautiful. You can see this separating just like what I was talking about, how these squares or diamond patterns will form. So now we're just gonna go in with the baste and brush the ham. So just base this on, make sure you're getting in between all of the cracks, just like that. We'll do this now about every 45 minutes for the rest of the cook. So we're six hours into the cook here, and at about the three hour mark, we had increased the temp on our grill to 275. So let's check in. Just look at that. So we're at an internal temp of 127 and we're aiming for 145. So it looks like we're getting a really nice golden brown on this side of the pork leg. So this side's a little less done. So I'm just gonna turn this around on the grill. Oh, 
beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, this has been on here now for seven and a half hours. We're just gonna go in, double check the temp. It's registering 145 with the smoker probe. 148 here, we'll check another spot. Yep, 147, 145, perfect. So this guy's ready to come off now, and we'll start slicing it up. So just look at this ham, absolutely stunning. We've got all those diamond square hash marks that I was talking about. This really beautiful, rich mahogany color from the smoke. This looks absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to carve into this. Okay, this looks absolutely perfect. So we're gonna slice into this here. Just see how this turned out. Just look at that. You can see the hole where we had the temp probe. We've got this really juicy, incredibly tender ham. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That tastes incredible. Just look at how incredibly juicy this ham is and done perfectly. Just look at that. It pulls apart, pull apart tender. Mmm, so good. This leg was a Berkshire Heritage breed, so we'd really recommend that you spend a little bit more just to get one of those. This was absolutely incredible. We're just gonna keep slicing through here, get this ready for the family. You can see the whole leg. We could easily serve 15 to 20 people with this, no problem. So before we go, I've gotta do the taste test again. Just incredible, really, really good. I'd highly recommend you try this at some point. I realize the self-brine is a bit of dedication. You can do the same recipe with a pre-cooked ham as well and just heat it up on the smoker. You know, I'd like the extra effort of brining it yourself. This is just absolutely incredible. It is nice and salty, but otherwise, this is just an incredible, incredible cook. So if you like this cook, like the video, leave a comment below. Consider subscribing to the channel if you think we deserve it and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.